In this video, I'm going to go over the VIS or Viz command for the Nexion display. There are instances where you might want an object to not appear, but then later on appear. I'm going to create an example to display a situation where you might want this. I'm using the same display that I have in past tutor tutorials, the uh, enhanced version, not the intelligent. I'm going to add a font. And I'm going to add three pictures. And just like the fonts, you can select multiple pictures and add them at once. If you notice in the images, there are pictures of a traffic light. I'm going to add three buttons so we can control which light we want to display at any time. Now I'm going to add the three pictures of the lights. I'm going to change the object names of the images to the light that we're going to be using. First one will be stop. Yield and go. Then we have to assign the image to the image. I like to use the browse so I can see what I'm selecting. This is the stoplight. The yield. We'll put names on the buttons, and we're going to just go down in the order they are, um, stop, yield, and go. I'm going to compile this just to make sure that I didn't do anything wrong with the names. And everything looks good. So Now, uh, when we click on the screen, it brings up the, the page itself, and on the post initialize, or the post initialization, we're going to set um, our visibility so that the green light is on. And this is where you use the viz command, V-I-S, and then you give the name of the object. This is why I renamed the objects, so that it will be easier to type in as we go. You put the name of the object and then a 0 if you want it to not display and a 1 if you want it to display. And the only one we want on is the go. This time I'm going to run debug and what you should see are the three buttons and you shouldn't see these two buttons or you shouldn't see these two images but you will see the green light. And you can see we got what we expected. We're going to take this same code from the post initialization and we're going to add it to the buttons. And all we have to do is change which one we want to be displaying. In this case we want the stop. We want the go to disappear. And in this case we want the yield to display and the go to be off. And finally we want the go to be displayed. And we'll see if this works. You can see it initially is set to go, yield, and stop. So it works nicely, but what if you want it to look like the lights are just changing? This is where it's important that all my images are the same size. I'm going to take the, the yellow one, the yield button here. If you go over to the attributes, the X and Y show where it is left and right and up and down. And the X is the distance from the left edge. I believe it's to this upper corner right here. And the Y is the distance from the top down to the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the X and have it set at 100 just so it's easy to remember. And we're going to set the Y to 50. And then we're going to go to each one of these and do the same. And you can see it looks like there, there's only one there now. 
But when we go to debug, it should hide the two and only show the one we want. And hopefully it looks like a smooth transition between the lights. So we start with red, or we start with green. And you can see the transition looks smooth. It looks like it's just changing colors in its spot. You can use the viz command, as you can see, to make things, um, give people kind of an illusion of what's happening. You could also make the black area and you could just have the circles be images, but you'd still have to visibly turn them on and off. I also want to show you something down here. I'm going to expand this. And if you can look, it gives you a warning that things overlap. If I move these off again, and I run the compile, that'll go away. But what I find interesting is they have to pretty much be overlapped perfectly on top of each other. Like if I just set this like this, and I compile it, you don't get that. But if I go over here, and I set it back to its directly overlapping state, and do a compile, and then you get the warning. I'm going to move it just one off and compile. And we don't get it. So it's not perfect, but it is kind of an interesting thing that lets you know that you do have an instance where something is directly on top of another one. I also wonder if it would be different if it wasn't the same size, which we can test right now. If I take this stop button, and set it at 100, and 50. It sets those corners right there. We'll see what happens. I do not get it. It must be if they're the exact same size. Let's do one more test. The width of this stoplight, of the red one, if you look at it down here, is 58 by 165. Let's take this stop button and set it to 58. By 165. And then let's set it at 100 and 50. And now let's do a compile. And you get that overlap. So that's kind of interesting. I guess it must be because it's directly hidden behind it. I'm going to make the button a little bit smaller than the light since it's behind it and see what happens. We're not going to be able to tell that we did it because we can't see it. But let's go ahead and compile. And we don't get that anymore. So it must have to be the exact same size. I find that very interesting. and That's something I just learned making this video. In one of my next videos, I want to try to make it look like that the red is slowly fading in and out. So if you had a flashing light or a, a flickering light or maybe a flickering candle, it would be interesting to know if there's a way to make the lights slowly move in and out. So that'll be another video that I'll do at some other point. I'm not really critical to learning the Nexion display, but just a little tip that might be interesting to throw on one to give it an illusion or to make something look a little more professional. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.